What's that word? What's that word, family? It's your homeboy, Low from the Go. Chris Nitty, Eastside 079, 9, Uh, shit, I'm just out here working, man. I'm trying to get to it, man. I'm motherfucking, I be battling. I got records out. I got, you know, I've got a couple artists. My little cousin going crazy, HRA. He getting right to this shit. RIP G-Ski, G-Ski shit was doing numbers. Like, man, we just been working out here, bro. I checked your music out. And I was like, I gotta have this guy on the show. I've been doing this shit since I was a little baby, man. I used to be, my old man, them used to have a garage lit, right? So I ain't wanna go to bed and shit. So I used to sit up all motherfucking night with they ass rapping and shit. That was the only way they let me stay up because they ain't that kicking it and shit. I'm rapping, rapping like a motherfucker. So it's like, this shit was always in me. And once I seen, you know, that I had what it take to do this shit, it was like take off from there. Yeah, my old man shit, bro. Like, my old man, always, he showed me everything, bro. I was always right up on him, bro. He did what he was supposed to do with me. I ain't gonna lie to you. Tell us a little bit about your father. Well, shit, my old man, he pretty much same as me, like just a street nigga, but you know, he just bad his business. He go about his way and shit. Everybody like him, everybody fuck with him, like. My old man used to take, like, my old man had a, a van, an Astro van back in the day, right? He used to pile up the whole motherfucking hood, the whole hood, take us motherfucking swimming and shit, you know, like, take us to go hoop, some shit like that. Like, my old man was the shit, everybody loved that nigga. I was cool growing up, bro, like, we was on, I was on 78 for Ridge when, you know, my little hood, Jeffrey Stone, the band, you know what I'm saying? We was motherfucking, we was decent over there though, like, it's the ghetto, but like I, man, like I tell motherfucker, like, you don't gotta act like that just cause you from the ghetto. Like, I'm a, I'm a gangster and a gentleman, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I ain't, I'm not looking for no trouble, but like, if trouble find me, then that is what it is, you know? And I always been like that, like, since I was a little shorty, like, I was always in the, in the right mind state. Like, my old man made sure, like, Nigga, you ain't gonna be no dumb nigga. Like, you already a nigga. You ain't gonna be no dumb nigga. My mama shit too, yeah. My mama pretty much like, just like my daddy. Like, you know, she a church woman and all that type of shit. When she ain't at church, she right on top of shit. Like, my mama is the business. That's, she, she has some shit. Like, you know, and motherfucking, like, she she did the same shit. She used to take all everybody out to try to get a motherfucker away so you can see that it's something different to do than bullshit, you know? Even though we still did the bullshit, but at least we know, you know what I'm saying? That's that's how my mama was. So we wasn't like rich. We was like like middle class, you know what I'm saying? Like the lights ain't never been off for me. Like I don't never recall like like just fucked up situations. Like, yeah, we lived in the ghetto, you know what I'm saying? But motherfucker had what we needed, you know, what we wanted. It wasn't like we was we wasn't we wasn't hurting for shit. Like I can't really say. I, I, I started being broke when I moved out on my damn home. When did you start recording music? Uh, man, that's crazy. Cause uh, I I just talked to I, the the first person that ever put me in the studio was my uncle, and he was making a gospel record, bro. And he was in the studio, and I was like. Like I say, everybody knew that I could rap even as a little ass boy. So he took me to that motherfucker and I just started spitting about the Lord. <laughs> I went right in. So it was like, I was, I had to be like, I had to be like nine, the first record that I actually made. And it was my uncle. My uncle was working on a gospel record straight up. Shout out to Uncle Gary too, because I, I just talked to you about that. <laughs> Everybody thinks in Chicago, they think of gang and fast the streets. And the story that you're telling me, man, it seemed like you had a pretty good time as a, as a child. Was it hard for you navigating through the streets of Chicago? I mean, yeah, it, you know, I had a good time because, like, it's it's all about the person, bro. Like, you don't, you don't have to be on that, you know what I'm saying? Like, more than likely, people going to like me rather than dislike me. And I'm a fucking, I, I had my fair share of beefing and all that type of shit too, but like, I ain't, boy, I ain't got time for all that goof ass shit. I rather check a bag. So I just navigated like, if I know I'm good over there, then that's where I'm gonna be. I ain't gonna, I, I, I know why I can and can't go. You know what I'm saying? It ain't Chicago. Outside looking in, Chicago was like overly fucked up. But when you live there, you know what you can and can't do. 
You know what I'm saying? It's just shit. It's all up to you on if you just feel like you got to be somewhere you're supposed to be, you know? Did you have any brothers and sisters growing up? Yeah, I got one brother, one sister. My uh, my sister, like, she the, she the sweetest person on the planet. Like, <laughs> literally the sweetest person on the planet, man. But uh, my brother, my brother was a menace growing up. Like, that nigga, he used to ride around with the with, with a pit bull in the back seat and a motherfucker saw it all, bro. And everybody in the whole hood knew that that's how this nigga was rocking, bro. Like, he, I remember mean, one time I was I was in school and these niggas tried to pull up on me and shit on some bullshit. That nigga flew up there, white all white box Chevy with the with the motherfucking Trues and Vogue shit on it and shit. Pop out with the motherfucking sawed on, bro. Everybody in the motherfucking school got up out the jail. <laughs> and that was a sawed off. They he had no switch, no shit like that. They just do like shorty has to shoot that motherfucker. But your brother involved in gang activities? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was uh he he been a part of like he he like my brother like six years older than me, so when I was a shorty, he was like already like a teenager and shit. So he was already off the porch. And he like I don't remember really, I don't remember that nigga not being a gang member. He wild as hell. Like my brother, my brother a fool. Well, like I, he had, uh, he had got kicked out of uh, Milwaukee. Like the nigga, had, he he moved to Milwaukee with my auntie them because he was acting motherfucker fool, right? And motherfucking the whole, the city of Milwaukee said if they see that nigga again, then he going. They never letting his ass up. He go, he going down forever. <laughs> that nigga was a fool. I'm telling you, like that nigga was a fool back in the day. He called, he a lot calmer now though, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker got kids and shit like that, but that nigga was a fool. I had got up out of here, it was really my choice to like just push up out of here, bro. Like I needed something different. I, um, you know, I'm in, I'm in high school, you know, we in tour with the Ops and all this goofy ass shit. And, uh, you know, I just really wanted to graduate to tell you the truth. So I needed a different type of environment. I flew down to Atlanta with my cousin them. And they was out, they was down there, you know, doing the same shit. But like, I didn't know nobody and shit. So I ended up getting my motherfucker high school diploma and shit. You know, did a little couple years of college and all that shit, bro. I really, I ain't gonna lie to you. I really fucked up coming back to Chicago. When I came back to Chicago, I got locked up with the pipe, and that just fucked up the whole college shit here thing. Motherfucker had scholarship. Well, I ain't gonna say full ride, but I had a partial ride to uh, Georgia Tech and shit for basketball and shit. What happened to that case? Uh, shit. My lawyer beat it up. Shout out to Frank Carey. That mother, he beat it up. Like that shit. Uh, I did a little probation, but it wasn't. It wasn't really nothing. It was like. Oh, uh, so you 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 got convicted for it then? Huh? Yeah. So that was a felony. Couldn't go to, you couldn't go to school no more after that, right? Yeah, it was over with. All right, so you like, damn, now you're now you back in the city, man. What what year is this? This like, uh, 04. 05, some old, oh, it's either, it's from 03 to 05, something, I can't really remember exactly when I came back. But right. yeah, it was, that shit was crazy. I, I lost, I lost everything I had going on fucking around.